Hey guys, I'm JC and today we're playing Crack the Thumbless partner with Thrasios Triton Hero. The goal of this Storm deck is to make many, many copies of various instants and sorceries to beat its opponents. If storming off with these commanders is something you'd like to do, then make sure to stop by the channel where we have a deck tech discussing all of the included cards as well as the overall strategy. Let's see if our opponents are ready for the coming storm. Hey guys, I hope you're all keeping well. Let's see who we're playing today. It looks like we have Karlov of the Ghost Council. And we also have a companion in Lurus of the Dream Den. Okay, that's interesting. We have EC Tyrant of Gaia Strait. And finally, we have Alayla Artful Provocateur. All right, if we take a look at our opening hand, I think it's a pretty easy keep. We've got enough lands. We've certainly got enough ramp. And we have Krak's Thumb, which is going to enhance any of the other spells we cast. So we'll definitely keep this. Alayla starts by playing a land for turn. And then they pass it from there. We draw a Noxious Revival for turn. All right, well, we'll play our Fetch Land. We'll crack it straight away. We'll put our Ketria Trium into play. And that'll be our stun for turn. Harlov plays a Tap Land for turn. And that is it for them. AC starts by casting a Mana Crypt. Then they cast an Arcane Signet. And then they follow that up with a Birds of Paradise. All right, did they actually keep a hand with no lands in it? No, they do actually have a land in Halamar Depths. So when it ETBs, look at the top three cards of your library, then put them back in any order. I would have said that was a very risky keep if they didn't actually have a land there. But I suppose having a Mana Crypt into an Arcane Signet into a Birds of Paradise isn't a bad start at all. So the AC player already looking very dangerous on turn one. Hopefully that will attract the removal of the other players at the table. And that is it for AC. Alayla plays a land. And now they cast Idol of Oblivion. Tap it, draw a card, activate only if you created a token this turn, and for 8 money you can tap it and sack it to create a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. And that is it for Alayla. We draw a Temporal Fissure for turn. So we'll just start by playing our Exotic Orchard. And we'll cast our Commander Croc. And that's going to be our stun. Karlov plays a land for turn, a Volrath Stronghold. So a bit of recursion on the land. And now they cast Dranath Magistrate. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Alright, well we were very lucky that we have a two-drop commander that we got down just in time. But Karlov's going to be able to come down pretty soon, and it's very likely they're going to be able to exile Croc, so we're going to have to start to do things pretty quickly. And that is it for the Karlov player. At the very least, it does hold back the AC and Alayla player. Now Mana Crypt does trigger on AC's upkeep. They lose the flip, so they take three damage. Next, they cast a Lightning Greaves. Now they move to equip the Lightning Greaves to the Birds of Paradise. Then they follow that up by casting Imprisoned in the Moon on the Dranath Magistrate. Okay, there's the answer they wanted. Enchant Creature Land or Planeswalker. Enchanted Permanent is a colorless land with tap, add colorless, and loses all other card types and abilities. Now they also play a tap land for turning Castle Garenbrig, just a way to get their commander down quicker, or any bigger creatures. And that is going to be it for the AC player. Alayla starts by casting Talisman of Dominance, and that is going to be it for them. We draw Joint Exploration for turn. Okay, well, that's a bit of card draw, so we're happy to see that. Let's start by playing our Island for turn. Now we're going to try to cast Joint Exploration Kicked. And let's just hope that Krak is good to us. So we're always going to choose heads here. Let's try it. And unfortunately, we lose the flip, so that bounces back to hand. So now we'll move to combat. We'll swing towards the AC player, just while they are so far ahead. And that is going to be us done for turn. So because our Exploration didn't go through, I think next turn we're just going to plan on Resolving our Krak's Thumb and then trying our three visits. Carlos starts by casting a Weathered Wayfarer. Pay a white tap, search your library for a land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Activate only if an opponent controls more lands than you. But that is it for them. It looks like the Karlov player might be hurting not having access to a second source of black or white mana. Now on AC's upkeep, Mana Crypt does trigger. Let's see if they get bolted again. This time they don't. Alright, very likely we see AC come down here. And we do. AC says you may play an additional land on each of your turns, and whenever a land ETB is under your control, you may draw a card. Now they follow that up by playing a land for turn, so they will draw. Next, they move to equip the Lightning Greaves to AC. They move to combat. They actually decide to keep AC back, and that is it for their turn. Alayla starts by playing a land for turn, a Crystal Vein, which they can sack to add two colorless mana. Next, they cycle a Reconnaissance Mission, so they'll discard that and then draw a card. But it looks like that is it for their turn. Notably, they do have open mana, so we do have to keep that in mind as we move to our turn. Now, we do draw a land for turn. I think we'll start by playing our Scalding Tarn. We'll crack it. Go find ourselves a Breeding Pool. 
We'll have it come into play untapped, so we'll lose two life. Now, despite the Alayla player having open mana, I still think we proceed as we talked about before. So let's try to resolve our Krark's Thumb first. That goes through, and they went through pretty quickly, so maybe the Alayla player isn't actually holding priority here. Well, next we'll cast our three visits. That triggers Krark. We'll choose heads. Looks like Krark's Thumb allowed us to get one heads and one's tails. We'll keep the heads result. So we're going to copy the spell. So now we'll tutor two lands to play. We'll find ourselves a stomping ground and a forest. We'll pay the two life to have it come into play untapped. And then from here, I think we'll suspend our search for tomorrow. Now we'll move to combat. We'll swing in towards the Alayla player. I don't think they're going to be able to flash anything in. Damage goes through, and then we'll pass the turn from here. Harlov starts by activating their Weathered Wayfarer. Let's see what land they find. It might be a Godless Shrine here if they're really struggling on their Colored Mana. Instead, they find themselves a Fetch Land. Now they play that Fetch Land for turn. They crack it straight away. They put a Scrub Land into play. Now they cast Dark Confident. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its mana value. And that is it for the Karlov player. Mana Crypt triggers on Ace's upkeep. They win the flip. They play a land for turn, a Scorched Ruins. It says if Scorched Ruins would ETB, sacrifice two untapped lands instead. If you do, put Scorched Ruins onto the battlefield. If you don't, put it into its owner's hand and it taps for four colorless mana. They just sacrifice some lands there. It does trigger AC, however, so they get to draw a card. Now it looks like they're tapping out for a lot of mana here. Let's see what they play. That amount of mana, we might be in Eldrazi territory here. They actually start by casting a Shire, Soul of the Wild. A Shire's power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control, and non-token and non-token creatures you control are forest lands in addition to their other types. But because a Shire does come down as a land, that does trigger AC to draw a card. Next, they cast the Dryad of the Elysian Grove. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. That is going to trigger AC, so they'll draw a card. Now they play a fetch land for turn, which triggers AC. Now they crack the fetch land. They put a land into play. They pay the two life so it comes in untapped. That triggers AC once again. Now they play another land for turn, which triggers AC. And finally, they cast Finale of Devastation, where X equals 3. Search your library or graveyard for a creature card with mana value X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you search a library this way, shuffle. If X is 10 or more creatures you control, get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. Alright, let's see what they find. We might see a Reclamation Sage come down here if they're worried about our Krark's Thumb. I really hope that's not the case though. Because we have big plans for the Thumb next turn. No, they actually find themselves a Tireless Provisioner. Whenever a land DTB is under your control, create a food token or a treasure token. That triggers AC, so they'll draw a card. That'll also trigger Tireless Provisioner. They decide to make a treasure token. Now they move to equip their Lightning Greaves to the Tireless Provisioner. They tap the Provisioner down for one mana, then they move the Lightning Greaves over to the Dryad. They tap the Dryad down as well, and now they move the Greaves over to a Shire. Now they tap a Shire down. And then they cast Arenicus's Vile Duplication targeting AC. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, except the token has flying and it isn't legendary. So now we have another AC in play. They move to equip the Lightning Greaves to the new AC. Now they play a Myriad Landscape for turn, that's going to trigger AC twice and Tireless Provisioner once. So they'll draw two cards and likely make a treasure token here. Now they move to combat, but they decide to hold AC back. And after that massive turn, that is it for the AC player. Well, I'm sure the other players at the table are on high alert. They've certainly got down a lot of permanents, and if they do untap next turn, the rest of us are going to be in big trouble. They could very well close the game out next turn. So let's see what the Alayla player has for this turn. They start by playing a tap land for turn, it allows them to scry one. But it looks like once again Alayla isn't doing much in their turn and they're just passing it over. On our upkeep, Search for Tomorrow has a suspend counter removed. So we'll be able to cast that next turn. And we draw a Jeska's Will for turn. Okay, that's actually quite a good draw. Especially with Krark's Thumb out. So I think that might actually be the play to start off with. So let's try to cast our Jeska's Will. We'll target the Karlov player here. That triggers Krark. We actually get tails on both of them, unfortunately. So that does really hurt. Alright, let's try it one more time and hope for the best. We'll trigger Krak again. And it looks like we have the AC player cast Pact of Negation targeting Jeska's Will. That doesn't completely undo us if we actually get a positive result here. But it will counter the original so it stops it from bouncing back to hand. We'll choose heads. We're going to choose heads to make sure it resolves. So that does go through. We'll keep the same target. And it looks like we get Anticipate Bribery is a good one, and a land. Alright, so unfortunately because we did fail the first two flips, we don't have as much access to non-red mana as we'd like to be able to do a lot more. 
this turn could have been very different if that was the case. So I think we have to really try to slow down the AC player here as much as we can. So I think what we're actually going to try to do is cast Noxious Revival as often as we can, hoping to bounce it back to our hand. And then we'll actually cast Temporal Fissure and start bouncing some of their permanents. And depending on how high the count we get, hopefully that will be enough to at least slow them down. So let's try that. We'll cast Noxious Revival. We're going to target our Jeska's Will. We'll pay life to do this. That's going to trigger Krak. That's good. We lose the flip. It goes back to our hand. We're going to do the same again. We lose the flip. That goes back to our hand. Good. So the plan's working out so far. We're getting up a nice storm count. We bounce it back to our hand once again. Let's keep going. That comes back once again. So I'm going to keep going here as much as I can, and I'll save you guys a little bit of time. And once I actually finally win the flip, then we'll stop it there, and we'll see how high that storm count actually is. And you'll definitely be able to see it in the life total. All right, so we finally won both of them, going down to 20 life. So Jessica's Will will go back on the top of our library, which is really good news. All right, and so finally now we cast Temporal Fissure. We'll target AC here as the first target. That also triggers our Krak. We're going to try to put it back into our hand. That does go back to our hand, thankfully. And so it looks like we have a storm count of 10, which should actually be quite enough to slow them down. So let's start allocating all of these temporal fissures. We'll hit all their lands. We'll also hit their arcane signet. That actually causes one of the players to scoop. I'm actually really surprised there because we weren't targeting them at all, but I guess they're thinking because we have temporal fissure back in our hand that we're going to be able to do that again next turn. So it looks like temporal fissure is actually taking out one player and it's going to severely reduce another player. But after all of that, we're just going to pass the turn over. And it looks like we actually also have the AC player scoop up to that. Okay, so it looks like Temporal Fissure did its job better than we could have expected. So it looks like now we only have to deal with the Karlov player. Dark Confident triggers on Karlov's upkeep. Let's see what they reveal. Looks like they get a Mishra's Bobble. And they do start by casting Mishra's Bobble. Tap Sack it. Look at the top card of target player's library. Draw a card at the beginning of your next turn's upkeep. They crack it straight away. And they already know that we have Jessica's Will on top. Let's just hope they don't have removal for Krak here, because that's going to make it really hard for us with Dranith the Magistrate in play. They activate Weathered Wayfarer. Alright, what land do they find here? Looks like they just find themselves a Command Tower. They play that for turn. And now they cast Leonin Relic Water. When Leonin ETBs, you may exile target artifact or enchantment, and when it leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Okay, well that's going to take care of our Krak's thumb, so that's going to help them quite a bit. But we're definitely happy to lose the Krak's thumb over Krak himself. And with Temporal Fissure, we can just bounce the Leon and Relic Water if we actually really need the thumb back. Now they move to combat. But they just decide to keep their creatures back. And that is it for their turn. Mishra's Bauble and Search for Tomorrow trigger on our upkeep. So Karlov draws a card. Now we cast Search for Tomorrow. And it looks like maybe I misclicked there and actually clicked through it. Because unfortunately it just went straight to our Exile Zone. So that's a little unfortunate there. But I think this turn we just start by trying to cast our Jeska's Will. So we'll target our opponent. They have seven cards in hand now. That triggers our Krak. Let's hope he's good to us. We'll choose heads. Unfortunately, we lose the flip on that one. So that isn't good news. Let's try it one more time. That triggers Krak. And this time we win the flip. So now we get two Jeska's Wills. Our first hit, it looks like we just get a couple of lands and three visits. Let's hope the second one's a little better. Oh, that one looks a lot better. We got Spark Double, Mana Morphos, and Mind's Desire. So now we've got access to 14 red mana, and Mana Morphos is going to be really good for us here. So is Mind's Desire. So we'll definitely play our island for turn, because we need access to the blue mana. So let's cast our Temporal Fissure. We'll target Dranith Magistrate. That triggers Temporal Fissure and Krak. So we'll hopefully bounce this back to hand. And unfortunately it doesn't. It does copy. So the additional copy, I think, will bounce the Leon and Relic Water. So now our thumb comes back. Temporal Fissure's Storm Triggers are going to go off. So we'll target their Colored Mana here. So now the Dranith is gone. We're going to try to cast Mana Morphos. That's going to trigger Krak. We'll choose Heads, so we're going to copy that twice. We're going to make two blue mana here. Oh, and we draw Thousand Year Storm. My favorite card in the deck. And then we also draw Turnabout. Okay, so we couldn't have really asked for better draws here. I think the game is pretty much going to be all but over. Short of us flipping some really bad coins. So now let's cast Spark Double. That's going to become a copy of Krak. Next, we're going to cast Turnabout targeting ourselves. That's going to trigger both of our Kraks. We'll choose one head, so we're going to untap our mana here. We'll untap our lands. Okay, and I don't know why that didn't work there. I did click untap, but for some reason we didn't actually untap our lands there. And we lost the flip on that one. Okay, so that's a little bit 
That's a little bit of a shame there. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So we really actually have to resolve this turnabout here or we're going to be in trouble. So now that hasn't gone through, that puts us in a little bit of a pickle here. So we'll have to cast our joint exploration now. That triggers both of our crocs. So we'll win the first flip. I don't actually think we need Irenicus' Vol duplication, so we'll put that on the bottom, but we'll keep Snap. Our second croc triggers. We also win that flip. We have a Ponder and a Windswept Heath. We can put the land to the bottom, but we'll keep the Ponder. And I like both of those very much, especially the Lightning Bolt. That should be able to help us get it done. So we'll put Croaking Counterpart there, and then Lightning Bolt can go on top, so we'll draw into it. But unfortunately, after that, I think we're going to have to pass the turn, and we do lose out on our Mind's Desire in three visits, which is a little bit of a shame, especially the Mind's Desire. But sometimes these things happen. Maybe I did misclick and I just didn't realize it back then, so I'll probably see it when I edit this video. So we won't go to combat. We'll just pass it over to our opponent. Dark Confident triggers on their upkeep. They reveal an execution as capsule. Now they play a land for turn. And now they cast a Winter Orb. As long as Winter Orb is untapped, players can't untap more than one land during their untap steps. All right, well, it looks like we've actually got ourselves a game here. It actually hurts us for not casting a land there. They also cast an Esper Sentinel. Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card unless that player pays X, where X is Esper Sentinel's power. So this is a good example here why you can never count a player out and why you've really got to play it through all the way to the end. So kudos to the Karlov player for being able to play this out. They may actually be able to turn this around. We'll soon see. We're still definitely further ahead than they are, but this has definitely turned into an interesting game now. And that is it for their turn. We're going to untap our Ketria Triome during our upkeep. We draw the Croaking Counterpart we knew we had. So we have a few choices here. We can use our Lightning Bolt to actually take out some of their creatures and slow them down a little further, even if Karlov Doves come down. We may want to hold it up for that. We could also Ponder just to actually set up our next draw, so we're making sure that we're actually drawing into lands. I think that might actually be the better option here, because if we get a land next turn, we'll untap a land, then we'll be able to cast Snap, bounce their creatures, have targets to untap more of our lands, and that's probably the way we break through the Winter Orb, so let's do that. We just got to hope that both Krarks and our Thumb are good to us, which they really should be. Statistically, we should be in a good position. Now, that does trigger Esper Sentinel, and we can't pay, so that will draw the Karlov player a card. Our first Krark triggers. We win the flip. A deflecting Swat, a Storm Kiln Artist, and a Baral. But I think we've got to shuffle. we really got to try to find that land, as much as I like to keep those ones there. And we get a Fluster Storm. Not too helpful. Let's see what our second one hits. Unfortunately, we lose both of the flips there. So, not a very eventful one there, unfortunately. We don't really want to go to combat at the moment because they're likely going to trade with their Dark Confidence, so I think we've just got to pass the turn. Karlov untaps their scrub land. Now Dark Confident triggers. It looks like they just find themselves a land. Now they activate their Weathered Wayfarer. So they're going to find themselves a land. They get themselves an Orzhov Basilica. They play that land for turn, so they have to bounce the land back to their hand. They bounce their Volrath Stronghold. And that is it for their turn. They do have to discard down here because they have 11 cards in hand. Looks like they're mostly discarding lands, including their Leon and Relic Water. We'll untap our Ketria Triome during our upkeep. Uh, we finally draw our land, which is really great to see, so let's play that land straight away. We'll pay the two life. And let's see if we can untap more of our land. So we're going to cast Snap. We'll target the Esper Sentinel. That triggers Esper Sentinel. We won't be able to pay, so they'll draw a card. It also triggers both of our Krarks. We win the first flip. So we're going to bounce Weathered Wayfarer here. We'll untap Ketria Triome and Breeding Pool. Our second Krak triggers. We also win the flip. This time we'll bounce their Dark Confident. We'll untap our Steam Vents and our Stomping Ground. And finally, Esper bounces itself. And we'll untap two Islands. Next, we're going to cast Turnabout, targeting ourselves. Hopefully it works out this time. That triggers both our Kraks. We win the first flip. We'll keep the targets the same. We're going to choose to untap. Okay, so that definitely must be a glitch where we actually have to choose the tap. So we've got to hope that this works out again. Okay, so we're going to choose heads here. We do win the flip. We'll keep the targets the same. We'll choose land. This time we'll choose tap. Okay, and that untaps them all. All right, there we go. We learned our lesson finally. Now in between, we're going to start floating some mana. We'll untap all of that. And now we're looking like we're in a really strong position here. All right, let's cast one of my favorite cards in all of Magic. Let's get down our Thousand Year Storm. Now let's cast our Ponder. It's going to trigger Thousand Year Storm and both of our Krarks. We're going to try to bounce this back to our hand. Thankfully on the first one it does. That's great. We'll try to win the second one if we can. We do get the choice, so we win that one there. A Rampant Growth, a Land, and a Resculpt. I don't think we really want to keep any of those, so we're just going to shuffle our library. 
And we actually draw ourselves the rampant growth anyway. So now Thousand Year Storm is going to copy that twice. Okay, I do think we actually want to keep the Shimmer of Possibility. So we draw that. Let's see what we get on the next one. Just some lands. We don't want to keep those. We find ourselves a You Find a Cursed Idol. Okay, that's going to be able to make us a lot of treasure tokens. It can also destroy the Winter Orb. So I think we're going to have the game at this point here. So next, let's cast our Shimmer of Possibility. That'll trigger Thousand Year Storm in both our Krarks. Let's try to get it back into our hand. We do. Let's go for the second trigger. That also loses. Now we get three copies thanks to Thousand Year Storm. Oh, Explore's a really nice pull there. So we'll, I think we'll actually take Explore. Let's see the next four. Ooh, Twinning Staff and Irenicus' Vol Duplication. We'll take the Irenicus' Vol Duplication. And the next one, oh, Mythos of Aluna. Another card I really love to play in this deck. I think we'll also take that one as well. So let's have a lot of fun here. Our opponent might concede here, but look, we're going to try to go as far as we can. So we're actually going to use Mythos of Aluna, and we're going to target our Thousand Year Storm. That'll trigger both our Krax and Thousand Year Storm. So we'll try to bounce it to our hand. We do. We also win the second flip. So we'll keep the same targets. Making another target a Thousand Year Storm. Now Thousand Year Storm has four copies going there. We're going to keep the same targets on all of them. So now we have six Thousand Year Storms in play. But you know what? I don't think we have enough Thousand Year Storms. So let's try to make a few more. That triggers all of our Thousand Year Storms. As well as both of our Krarks. So as usual, we're going to try to bounce it back to our hand. And we get the choice thanks to our Krarks Thumb. Doing a lot of work this game. Next one we'll try to win. We do win it, so we'll keep the target the same. Now, I won't make you sit through the rest of us. I'm just going to show you the end result of all of this. All right, so we got through all of that. And look at that there, my friends. That is a thing of beauty. I don't even know how many Thousand Year Storms we actually have on board. But it's quite a lot. So let's finish this game in the way that every Storm player loves to be able to do it. With a simple but effective Lightning Bolt. So we're going to target our opponent here. This is probably going to crash magic, but it's been worth it. Let's do it. Let's rain thunder down upon our opponent. And I'm very thankful to our opponent for actually sitting through all of this. Many other players would have conceded by now. Very appreciative. Many, many triggers of Thousand Year Storm go on the stack. Okay, well, it doesn't look like it's crashed so far. So we're going to keep all the same targets. And that is the game done there, guys. I also just checked chat. And our opponent actually really liked our deck. They actually said they want to go check out the deck tech. So that's always a win when you get your opponents over and enjoying the shenanigans that you're up to. So... That is us done, and um, let's go to the review and discuss what happened. Well, if you were a betting man, your money would have definitely been on AC to win this game. They were off to a very fast start, and the value they ended up generating was quite incredible. But what I didn't think any of our opponents were expecting was what happened next. Krak, in concert with his thumb, Noxious Revival, and Temporal Fissure, showed just how powerful this commander can be, and just what it's capable of seemingly out of nowhere. Of course, the highlight of this game was creating all those Thousand Year Storms. Now, if you're a value player like me, then being able to just use 1,000 Year Storm, let alone 36 of them, is very satisfying and it's something I think that every player needs to experience at least once. But that's it from me today. If you're a big fan of 1,000 Year Storm or even storming off in general, then I hope today's game was as satisfying to watch as it was to play. Until next time, guys.